That was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. How many of you already started drinking? <laughs> That's what I thought. All right, I like where this is going. So how's everyone doing today? Good. How was everyone's work week? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> You're like, it's over. No work week. You're like, I'm retired. Today's Saturday, right? I wish. Every day is Saturday. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is Saturday. Every day is Saturday. All right, so to those of you who have been to one of our properties, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Very special show for you this evening. Very simple, very easy. All things that you could do at home. Maybe a few things you could do like three or four months in advance if you're super crafty. Your entree this evening. Beautiful handmade chive gnocchi, tossed with sausage ragu, some pepperonata, a little bit of fresh parm, and over the top, a simple breadcrumb. How does that sound? Delicious. Good. So guys, we're having salad and pasta. Is that all right? <laughs> it's going to be real good. Just some nice salad and pasta. Keep it simple. Keep it easy. Keep it fresh. And we're drinking wine. How does that sound? Yeah. All right. <laughs> So the first thing that we're going to get started on, guys, is going to be our sausage ragu. And this is pretty simple. It's basically a combination of sweet Italian sausage. You can use spicy if you'd like. Onions, uh, sorted peppers, fresh herbs, a little bit of garlic, some extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper. Very simple, very easy. This is literally something that you can make, keep in the fridge. I usually just like, you know, shovel it into my mouth out of a Tupperware. <laughs> I involve nothing else. However, this works beautifully in a lasagna. We're obviously going to be tossing it with uh, fresh gnocchi. This goes beautifully with regular pasta. Um, it, it, it's fantastic. I can't wait for you guys to have it. And it's incredibly simple. I think that's the biggest thing. So we are going to, we're only going to be using a little bit of each thing. So I need a small amount of green pepper, small amount of yellow as well. I forgot to take this chicken off. <laughs> <laughs> Until I announced it to the room, I was like, oh shoot, there's a sticker on there. At least it didn't make it into the food, that's the scary part. Tasty. Everyone in here has done that. You put the lemon in, totally, totally left the sticker out. All right, so a little bit of pepper, and you can kind of cut this anyway. I'm leaving mine as like a pretty simple julienne, um, and this is going to cook down. All right, so a little bit of pepper, a little bit of, and we're using tricolor. I think tricolor makes it look really nice. And I'm gonna turn this on relatively well. So I have a high sided pan, and I wanna bring it up to temp. I'm putting a little extra virgin in here. I'd say probably about two tablespoons, right? If you wanna use blended oil, you could use that as well. That's really up to you. So I think all in all, I probably have about a cup and a half of sliced peppers. Now, I, like I said, I'm using the tri-color because I think it looks better. If you just want to buy one color pepper at the grocery store, you absolutely can. But kind of keep in mind, if you're going to go red and green, we're not making a Christmas pasta. Involve another color. Pick one or do all three. All right. And we're going to put a little red onion in there as well. This is stuck. I'm not even joking. There we go. Little red onion. You could use white if you want to as well. It's up to you. And again, simple julienne. I just think it looks better when it cooks down. And I'm using about a quarter of this onion. Maybe I'll cut a little bit more. Again, we're just tossing this all in. And we'll season this slightly once it gets going with a little bit of salt and pepper. Right? Just a small amount. Small amount. We'll season this about two or three more times. Till the very end. Yes. Absolutely not. That's so silly. <laughs> yep. So this is going to be for two to three. I would say if it's my brother, it's one. Um, the gnocchi that I'm going to be making is eight to ten. And then the sauce that I'm putting together is just for one entree only. Breadcrumbs are kind of up to you. I'm using a cup if you're really heavy on the bread. One. Um, but yeah, don't worry. I'll check in on the specific amount. I won't leave you hanging. You're like, but oh, wait a minute. 
survival of the fittest in here, my friend. I am making everyone's food. It's whoever can get over the counter fast enough. This guy's already on it. He's like, he's like, I got this. I'm stretching out in the back. You just see like one massive leg come up over the counter. <laughs> it's, it is the real Hunger Games because everyone's absolutely starving and there's one entree. Let's raise our glasses. <laughs> cheers, cheers to Bar Rustic's executive chef, Joey D, for actually making food for all of you. Cheers. <laughs> now, these peppers are already going, peppers and onions, so we're gonna turn this down, right? And we're gonna add some sausage. And I am using sweet Italian. Now I buy mine, obviously, in five pound logs, which is why it looks like I literally just sliced it off of a giant log of meat. If you guys buy it in the grocery store, just make sure that you take the casing, you wanna remove the casing off, you want loose sausage, all right? So you can absolutely do that. I'm using a pound of sausage right now, and that's pretty much what they sell it in the grocery. And I'm breaking it up just a little bit, just because we're not gonna cook it for too long. So if you throw it in in one big chunk, it's really not gonna have the opportunity to cook long enough to break down. So, I just want to get a little browning going on with this sausage and then we'll flip it over and we'll move on. Now, while my sausage is starting to brown, we'll give it a little turn. Just take a little, little looky-see. A little look to see, it actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn that down just slightly. And we're gonna start putting our gnocchi dough together. All right, so the sausage ragu is literally almost done. The last things that we're gonna be adding to this are gonna be some fresh herbs and garlic, which are gonna go in at the very end. All right, and I'll make sure to go through them before we finish up our delicious ragu. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more sausage, a uh, tiny bit more salt, as well as some pepper. One more turn, and I'm gonna turn this down. All right. So, while you guys are having your salads, I'm gonna go ahead and start making our gnocchi. So I have three, I'm gonna use three Idaho potatoes. And they're a little warm, but they're not yeah. smoking hot. Right. We are removing the skin. You don't have to if you don't want to. However, all the skin is going to do is literally clog up our ricer. So I always encourage people to remove it. Also, any of the char that ended up a ricer. Any of the char that's on there as well. We want these gnocchis to look perfect, especially if you're gonna make them. These are Idaho potatoes, so yes, russet potatoes. We did. So a lot of people are really funny and they're like, oh, you know, you have to boil the potatoes. I'm like, why would you boil a potato that you're gonna make a pasta with that needs to be dry? Why you do this? Why you do? Make dry, not wet. So you definitely wanna roast them. And you wanna roast them until they're like totally tender. Like this one is basically falling apart. I wanna make sure that I get as much out of this as possible. Might have to bring the racer over now. So this, how many of you have seen this before? Anyone? Perfect. I love racers, I'm a big fan. This probably costs about 125 bucks. Um, if you're planning on using it all the time, it's totally worth the purchase. They make a, a one that's slightly smaller than this, so it would make sense for your houses, for your homes, I should say. Uh, that runs about 75 bucks. This is like one of those things where if you see it in home goods, just buy it. All right, so just getting as much of the skin off as we possibly can. 
without totally destroying the patata. We gotta stir our sausages. Beautiful. <laughs> Cutting off the ends, getting rid of the skins. Just like that. All right. All right. So, everyone, check this out. Absolutely beautiful. Nice and soft. Here we go. Let's just get this off around the edges. Of course, all the delicious. It's basically a giant potato patty in the bottom. You can do this over a bowl as well. You do not have to do this on a cutting board the way that I'm doing it. If you're afraid of mess, if you're one of those then you can absolutely do this in a bowl. We're just gonna create a beautiful little mound. Nice little mound. This is gonna get a little messy, but not too messy. Pile of taters. Pile of taters. <laughs> Sticky taters. And we're gonna create a little well for our egg. Just has to go kind of in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are so sticky. Let's give these a stir. I can just hear the sausages sizzling away. Delicious, delicious sausage. I know, right? And all this, this, I know, it is good. Whatever I don't use to make my entree goes in a to-go container and I bring it home. <laughs> and I eat it on the couch. <laughs> Yummy. One delicious, not farm fresh egg. <laughs> Unfertilized. <laughs> and then, of course, a little bit of salt and pepper all the way around. A little bit. This is pretty much. Like you. Well, keep in mind, none of this is going to be seasoned. Literally none of it. We are adding a little bit of Parmesan cheese, but not enough to actually really season. I can eat Oh. Oh, yeah. Hypertension yeah. <laughs> happens to the best of us. It's my mother's fault. less salt in the Atlantic Ocean than you He's lived a good life. All right. One cup of all purpose flour. No, I'm not sifting it. This is gnocchi. It's not going to be. It's not going to be super fresh pasta. So let's just mix our egg a little bit here. And we're going to start folding all of our ingredients together. Now, I find that when making gnocchi, one of the biggest things is you do not want to mix the ever-living daylights out of it, all right? You're making a soft dough. It's potato-based, but obviously there's flour in there to hold it together, at least my recipe. A little bit of chive for color as well as flavor. Salt, Parmesan cheese, and an egg. And gnocchi is one of those things where I always encourage you to make it by hand. This is not something that I would ever mix in a mixing bowl. And we are working some of the gluten out of this flour, but not a lot. And I did design this recipe with all-purpose flour so that everybody in the room does not have to go out and buy a specialty flour at the grocery store. All right. So that came together relatively quick. You want it to have a little bit of spring back, but not too much. And try and keep our board relatively clean. Beautiful. So I'm just making sure that this isn't too sticky. Okay, should have a little bit of give. We're just cutting off a little piece. I'm gonna roll it out. I wanna make enough for one. Also, with this dough, you need to make sure that you let it rest for at least two hours. All right, there we go. All right, so we have some cute little pillows, food pillows. Gnocchi's done. Sausage ragu is almost done. I'm just going to try to push on the sausage a little bit more. I do want to, it's pretty cooked right now. I usually like to let the sausage ragu cook for, that looks terrible, uh, cook for at least 20 minutes. It's 
probably been about 30 now. So we're using three fresh herbs in here. What do we have? Nope. Nope. Parsley. Right here. Parsley. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming. What do we have in the center? I know this is. Nope. Nope. A weed. Thank you. I heard it on this side. Oregano. And finally, there we go. Everybody got that one. They've all seen the little plants in the produce section. You're like, should I get one? It's the same price as the stuff that's already clipped in the little clam. You know, it's funny because I use fresh herbs in restaurants all the time, and I have a big garden at home. I just counted my watermelons. I have eight. And that doesn't include anything that's smaller than a grapefruit. So I got a lot of little ones coming out, but they're not there yet. And I never grow herbs. Never grow them. I have blackberries, raspberries, watermelons, eggplant, chilies, peppers, two different kinds of cukes. Well, the chickens are like, they're just all over the place. There's like 40 of them right now. Are you single? Plus, I have two broody hens. No, isn't that scary? <laughs> Plus, I have two broody hens. One of my silkies is hoarding eggs like a mofo. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to see her babies. They're going to be so small and cute. I'm going to pick one. It's going to be my pocket chicken for summer. <laughs> if you don't know what a pocket chicken is, you've never had chickens, it's literally a chicken that you carry in your pocket everywhere until they get too big, and then you have to let them be with their siblings. I'm hoping for about 20 siblings within the next 30 days. All right, so I need about a tablespoon and a half of each one of these. This is going to be a little too much of each. I'm just going to give it a quick shift on. A little bit of fresh herb, just a small amount. Small amount. All right, so very quickly, guys, I know you're eating. I have one cup of crumb, two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese, three tablespoons of unsalted butter, and one tablespoon of garlic in here. We literally just melted butter and garlic together. That's it. And I'm a big fan of just pouring it over the top and hoping for the best. Sometimes you just got to go. Little bit of salt. Okay. Little bit of pepper. Just a smidge. And I'm going to mix this together slightly. I usually like to mix it until it's like all kind of clumping together. That's when you know there's plenty of butter in there. All right, this is going to go in the oven. 350. I'm going to set I'm going to set a 7 minute timer. And we'll check on it. 7 minutes. Now, the bread that I'm using in there is regular old, I think we actually use baguettes. Technically a baguette is half white dough, half sourdough. But I tell people all the time, stay away from the stuff that comes in a canister. Like if, if you don't have the time to make fresh crumb, make time at some point. Buy the day old loaves at the grocery that they're selling for like 80 cents to a dollar. Leave it out on the counter for like a week. <laughs> Seriously, like rip the bag open and let it dry. Throw it through your food processor and just grind it up and then throw that bag in the freezer. Breadcrumbs freeze beautifully. Take out whatever you need as is, toss it with some Parmesan cheese, a little melted butter, even just some olive oil, throw it in the oven and you have fresh crumb every time. So. Crumbs are in, sausage is done. We're gonna go ahead and turn that up. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. Beautiful. Seasoning the water just slightly. I love those people who are like this. I think I put too much. To every gallon of water, you should put between a quarter of a cup and a third of a cup of salt. All right. When they tell you to season the water, it should taste like the ocean. Now, I'm not going to say while it's boiling, go ahead in there and get a big spoonful and eat it, but putting a tablespoon of salt into a gallon of water doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even register. So you want to season your water. If you're 
like creeped out right now. Go with a quarter of a cup. If you're overly confident, go straight to that third of a cup, maybe even half the box, all right? Whatever, whatever helps you. All you're doing is essentially pre-seasoning your food before it gets into the pan. So these gnocchis will be seasoned nicely before they even get into their sauce. So I have gnocchi, I have a little bit of my sausage ragu, a little bit of butter, chicken stock, pepernata, and of course, some marinara. So we can go ahead and start with a little bit of sausage ragu. Just a smidge. I'm gonna take that home. <laughs> okay, a little bit of chicken stock. I would say about an ounce and a half to two ounces of marinara. You can just use stuff on the grocery. One restaurant tablespoon of butter, so two tablespoons for you. About a quarter of a cup of pepernata. Pepernata is literally bell peppers, an onion, slowly cooked with like a little bit of crushed tomato in it. That's it. You can actually omit it completely from the recipe if you don't want to use it. Perfect. Okay. So we're just going to build a little bit of a sauce. Uh, a little more than half a cup of chicken stock. We're gonna toss our gnocchi into the water. In they go. Now these are frozen, and I'm gonna put a little bit of broccoli rabe in there as well. That I'm really just blanching for color. Now the pickup is pretty much the easiest part. Prepping everything else can literally be done days before that. Sausage ragu sits beautifully for a week. Gnocchi's you can make three months ahead of time. I'm gonna add a little bit fresh herbs to this. Let's check on the patata. I'm gonna add a small amount of Parmesan cheese to this. Just to bring it together. Another 30 seconds. So, gnocchis, or gnocchi, not gnocchis, are beautiful in texture. So here's some fresh crumb. I know, right? Sketchy. And I always just loosen it slightly off the pan. It's literally perfect as is. And there's already salt and pepper, so don't you fret. Don't you worry about that in there. I'm gonna put a little more parm in here because I want this to come together very nicely. Not all of it, I need to save some for the top. So you want the sauce to coat nicely, right? So it should have a little bit of sheen. It should be almost nappe, but you can't really have a nappe sauce with chunks of sausage in it. So it should coat the pasta, it should coat. It shouldn't be broken, there shouldn't be like an oil slick going on in here. <laughs> Usually that's what happens when, you know, it's like 3 a.m. You're like, mm. Let's open McDonald's. Extra crumbs. Bread on bread on bread. America. <laughs> America. Should not do that. Little pan. Well, that's because I'm making one, and it's for me. <laughs> I gotta sell it to myself, you know what I mean? Not convinced. 
a little bit of my favorite, NF tree. Non-functional garnish, some people think it's no mm, good, but it's not. It's very good. Mr. Jim, how's that? I can present to you since you're right there. So this is our house-made chive gnocchi, tossed with a sausage ragu and finished with a fresh breadcrumb. What do you think? <laughs> do I have to do it again? I know. Oh, <laughs> all right, one more time. All right, we're all like this. It's a lot of this. Ready, Jim?